Hello everyone and welcome to what is the beginning of a video that is showing the end of a race that seems to have finished a bit prematurely. We're going to get into all of that, but first I want to talk about the specifically special qualifying session right here. As you can tell that I am getting bumped into by another cart and that is very very rare in a green white checkered qualifying session now that is because this is not a green white checkered qualifying session and the reason for that is because we had a pothole in the middle of the track and during warm-up we discovered that this pothole likes to fling rocks up at other drivers and if you're a driver the last thing you want is a rock being thrown at your face so they took the executive decision to change the track layout in the middle of the race day and we resorted to a five minute qualifying session instead of just two laps so everybody can kind of get the grips now that did mean that we had our best qualifying yet in this ka in 10th place now the one thing we need to watch out for is if you're an even number that means you are on the outside and that also means that going into turn one you risk getting sent off into the dirt as we've seen plenty of times in these videos 206 action right there and i almost send the 199 off myself into the dirt right there now we're going about three wide into turn two i'm getting bumped from the back bump from the side it is just a whole lot of i guess muscling through those turns right there i'm gonna see if i'm gonna have a little bit of a look through there i'm able to get past them but at the same time i'm gonna lose all that momentum i took that way too narrow and that ka just doesn't have the power to get out of there when we drop down too low in the power band through there now we have successfully survived most of the first lap things have kind of settled down a little bit so we just kind of got to head our, get our heads focused in a little bit as you can tell i am not doing the right thing and making the track narrower for myself now you don't really want to be doing that because the narrower you go the slower you exit and the more you lose touch with your opponents so at the end of the day lucky to be alive and running still in this heat right here starting in the middle of the pack can sometimes be just a little bit crazy as you can probably tell but thankfully we survived and everything is working out just good for us now i was still kind of working on this bus stop section through there i i find myself struggling to send it over the curbs the same way that i send it over the 206 one it feels just a bit more violent and kind of hurts my hips and spine a bit more but really it's more just the fact that i guess i'm still in the mindset of babying the go-kart and kind of just trying to save the chassis and a little bit worried about cracking it or anything like that but i kind of need to just get that out of my head and just drive right because if i'm too worried about crashing it or this or that or cracking it or anything like that i'm not going to get the speed that i hope however we fast forward to lap number five and you can see that I'm still in there, still in touch with the battling pack right here. And a good sign is that I might be in 11th, but 10th, 9th, 8th, and 7th are right there in front of us. And they're actually gonna, two people trying to make a move in there, a little bit of shuffling in the pack right there. And now we have ourselves our little buddy right here, Michael, number 73. We're gonna have ourselves a little bit of battle. We're gonna see if we can maybe make a move on him. I think we're just a bit too far back. We have someone else trying to make a move on us, but it's used also just way too far back through there. Now, really important as you can tell, the amount of time that the person behind us actually lost. If you don't pick the overtakes, the right, you're gonna lose time like that and just lose touch with the pack. Especially when we're battling in a pack like this and everybody is benefiting off each other's slipstream, you lose touch and it's gonna be extremely difficult to find your way back to the pack now. Michael telling us let's work together let's get back to the pack just as I was saying let's not lose touch on them and we're gonna see what we can do through here I get that apex really nicely but Michael was able to get the power down and go through there real nicely as well we have caught up to the other two drivers right there that we kind of lost track with a little bit going a little bit wider on the exit I noticed through those S's and then we have some more shuffling some more battling now you might be noticing that all the battling is going on in front of me and I kind of just seem like I'm trying to just hang on a little bit through here. Now, one of the things that was very much needed in this race was a rebuild on the motor. So a little bit of background about these specific KAs. They are a bit more needy than the 206 engines. For example, 
last time I rebuilt, and it's not even really a rebuild, it's just kind of cleaning the valves, cleaning the carburetor, making sure that there's no carbon deposits um, in the areas where you want to maximize airflow, making sure that you seat the valves, kind of things like that. Not really needing any new parts per se. It's fairly easy to maintain I mean you don't need any crazy tools or anything like that to really do it I mean maybe like an ultrasonic cleaner or something like that for the carburetor but it's not much that it takes and you can probably run those things for 40 hours you don't you really don't need to worry about it too much however these KA engines every 8 to 10 hours people are getting them rebuilt and on top of that the regulations technically on the 206 engines you're not allowed to blueprint them and hone them out and do all that stuff now do other people do things like that you know, we'll leave that up to the discretion of others. But you are allowed to blueprint your engines here in these KAs. You are allowed to change out the cylinders. One thing maybe you know, maybe you don't know, is that on the bottom end of those four-stroke engines, they actually have a lock. And the reason for that is that they don't want people changing the, the rods or the pistons or anything like that. They make it, I guess, technically impossible to do so. If you wanted to do it, you'd have to break the lock and break the seal. Now, coming into the final lap, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but we're trying to defend ourselves through here. We had done a really good job at holding ourselves back. We had gone up to 10th place because someone else had been stopped on the side of the road, but it just didn't work out for us right there. We're going to see if we can fight back. We have one more lap left to go. The 151 has kind of pulled away from us through here. We have someone else behind us making some moves as well, but it's just not going to work out. It's not going to be ideal for us we're a bit too far out of touch through here we do take a little bit more speed through there bit of a different line as i was saying earlier still kind of just trying to figure out how to take that kind of get that mindset out of my head of protecting the chassis so at the end of the day finishing in 11 it is one place back from where we started however the good thing is we are going to be starting on the right side of the track on the inside line giving us the opportunity to hopefully get a good start and kind of push ourselves through so also taking a look at how far off we are on the times. We are still about nine tenths off, similar to qualifying as well. And while that doesn't sound like a lot, nine tenths is a whole lot. When you look at, for example, Pro Kart, which is the goal for next year to do races like that, it will be about half a second between first place and 13th place, for example, just for the qualifying session. And going on in the background, is a car that will not start. Pretty stressful situation. Good thing it has nothing to do with me, but they end up getting that figured out. And one thing that I need to figure out is how to get a better start. Clearly not something I'm good at. It's, I guess it's kind of tricky. I worry about not getting penalized, not pushing people when I shouldn't be, things like that. But as we wait till the last moment to get lined up, everybody gets brake checked. We should be lining up at the start finish straight, but clearly that is just not a thing that happens here. And Michael pointing at the one in the end, it seems like there's a fire. I guess it was just a reflection in the chassis, but we have the 966 taking them out for good measure, making sure we can get all the positions gained on the start, getting pushed and shoved, ending up on the outside, not exactly where we want to be, going about three wide into turn two. And if you can see, it's Mr. Michael making a comeback from the dead on the straight through there incredible stuff now we're gonna get overtaken by one person a second person is gonna try to make a move but he fails to realize that there is a limited amount of track and a limited amount of width so he collides with my wheels and he goes straight into the barrier and another person going straight into the barrier as well pretty unfortunate for that person and you can tell i'm throwing my hand up because i'm kind of pissed off as i should be because i myself know that there is a track limit now just trying to focus in right now we did successfully survive lap two one of the biggest things i worry about with that is just the axle itself now you get a little bang like that usually it doesn't really do too much but there's always that bit of a worry a bit of that bending at the end of the day any kind of hit like that is not good for the cart and warrants me getting pissed off at the other person so Right here, we have been able to get back in touch with a little bit of fighting that happened in front of us to get a little bit back in touch with the pack and see if we can maybe get settled in. We go into this, we get a little bit of snap over steer and we have someone right there in the middle of the track and I hit them. Yep. As you can tell, I am 
slightly pissed off. Now, I don't want to go out just blaming everybody. I, I guess I should have been looking up a little bit more forward, but at the same time, if you take a look at the replay, last moment, one cart pulls away. I guess I just didn't see it in my peripheral, and with that one cart pulling away at the last moment, then I just see a cart just stalled in the middle, and I had... I guess I was pretty pissed off, right? Because from what I had thought was like, why are you letting this person back on the track? And why is this person even just hanging around in there? So I guess what happened was that this person had spun out, they put him back on track, and then they stalled right when the pack was coming towards us. So pretty unfortunate. The damages were done to the axle. And yeah, pretty unfortunate, pretty unfortunate. And I was pretty frustrated, I guess with myself, but one of the most important things is just to see is there anything I could have done better? Now, the one thing I did notice, as I talked about earlier, is that I'm pulling out too early from those turns, trying to make a move and initiate it way too early, and I lose momentum. If I would have just stayed behind and taken that normal race in line as I should have, I would have actually cleared him just fine. Now, yes, going into the brakes, I did get a little bit of snap oversteer, um, going a little bit hard on the brakes when I was trying to trail off and turn in. Now that did change the line that I was taking a little bit but at the end of the day it just goes down to some of the things that I need to get more used to some of the car I just need to become more comfortable with and just highlights I guess one of the biggest areas that I really need to become more confident in on that car and become more comfortable is just getting on the brakes for example turn one super super tricky for me it's an area that I'm still working on you can tell that I let off a bit earlier than I'd like, I get on the brakes a bit earlier than I'd like, and really that just comes down to a lack of confidence in the brakes and a lack of, I guess, full feel that I'm getting out of them. I did notice with the switch from the normal axle to the hard axle, I felt like I lost a bit of brake feel. I guess that just comes into, maybe it's not digging in as much, it's just because it's harder, it transfers over less feel. I guess it's just one of my theories. Now, the one thing that is interesting is that I did feel the same thing when I moved and I switched my 206 axle from the normal to the hard. So I guess it's just one of those things that you have to deal with when swapping over to the axle. A little bit less stability in the rear end as well because it's stiffer, but just things that we gotta work on, things that we gotta do. And if you would like to donate an axle to me, please let me know. I will happily and willingly take it. Thank you very much, and I will catch you later with a cart that works, hopefully, on the next round.